Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're going to be going over my top 10 FO Studio shortcuts. So to get us started, number one, if you middle mouse click and then left click uh, while holding down the middle mouse, you will open up this secret menu. So this menu replaces pretty much this top bar up here. So instead of having to come up here to select stuff, or you could use the shortcuts for these, you can just middle mouse click, left click, and then open it up right here, which is how I tend to work. And so it is on my top 10 for sure. Number two on my list is, is closely related. So oftentimes when you wanna slice something, right, you'll go over here and you'll pick the slice tool. But if you have an open area, you can actually hold down the right shift and click and drag. And you have to start over an open area because if I'm clicking here, it's not working. But if I click down here while holding down the right shift button, it will actually make it so you can very quickly cut things up. I use this for audio editing. I use this for event editing. It is one of the most handy ways and it completely avoids the need for me to ever go to the cut tool, which is one reason why I sometimes like to space things out or I'll move something up for a split second, mess around with it, and then I'll, I'll move it back. Number three is control B. Now there are various cases where I'd use this, but let's just say that you have something that you want to repeat. You could go ahead, select it and hit control B and it will duplicate it. But control B is a little bit cooler than just this because what it'll do is it will actually duplicate it after the selection that you've made. So let's say that I've got a bunch of small note data information here and I select it. If you hit control B, it'll paste it right after the end of your selection. So let's say you wanna maintain these gaps. If you just make a selection by holding control click drag, and then you hit control B, it will perfectly sync it up for you, which completely avoids the problem of having those weird gaps. And so that's something that if you're gonna use control B, definitely be aware of this, because another thing you might do is just select them and you can hold shift and drag, and you can avoid it that way. But once you know about the selection ability, kind of avoids the whole problem. Shortcut number four is multi-select. Something I see, especially newer producers, uh, struggle with. They don't know it's an option. So let's say that I want to select this A, and then I can also select this E and this C, or maybe I didn't want to select this E. I can unclick it. So how am I doing this? It's really easy. It's just like you would normally select. You hold down Control and you drag. You could select things. But then in order to keep your previous selection, simply hold Shift down. If you hold down shift, you can add selections or you can remove them. So this is one that's very, very easy for me to do, especially if I've written out piano part and there's a melody and there's some chords, I can very easily just select the melody or the chords using this without having the pain of selecting it all, copying and pasting it and then deleting the parts that I don't want. So pretty handy way of doing things, multi-select. Number five is F8, but I hardly ever use the F8 option. So if you hit F8, it'll actually bring up the plugin picker. However, I hardly ever use it that way. Normally what I do is I come down to the little plus icon and I right click, it brings up the plugin picker. And what's so great about this is let's say I wanted to add a harmer. I can right click, I can type in harmer and hit enter and it will load it up. And notice that this plugin picker only has the generative plugins. If you've got your plugin database correctly set up. If you go into the mixer and right click on this, you'll only get the mixer plugin. So let's say that I want to add a parametric EQ. I can do that, there it is, and away I'm going, I'm ready to start mixing with that. So pretty handy tool, just right click on something as opposed to going through the menu, which is definitely something I have not done in ages because the menu is just harder to maintain and keep up, especially as you gain more plugins or if you're constantly switching things out. It's easier to just name stuff and then type in the name and hit enter. You don't even have to use your mouse after you've right clicked. So it's a pretty beautiful thing. While we have the mixer open, let me show you a few ones in here. So number six would definitely be side chaining. So let's say that you wanna side chain this to something. Normally you would right click on the track and then you would go side chain to this track or you could route to this track and then remove the signal. And that, that's the, how you would sidechain. Instead of doing all this stuff, you could just shift click and it will automatically sidechain it. So super easy way to do sidechaining. Just select the channel and shift click and you're good there. Uh, some things that are a little less known that I, I've actually had to go and look up and once I finally learned how to do them, I was like, thank goodness there's a way. So you may know that if you click on a channel and then scroll your mouse wheel while holding, what is it, shift, control, it's shift. 
while holding shift, it'll move that channel around. But if you make a selection of channels, like so, you hold down control and click to do that, and then you hold down shift and scroll, it'll only scroll the one, which might drive you totally bananas, because how do you easily, let's say I want to move all the drums by some amount. Well, I could select these drum channels, and if you hold down alt, and then go left or right, and I actually don't know if it works with both alts, but if you hold down the left alt, and then do left or right, you can easily move entire groups of channels around. Something that uh, I wondered for ages how to do, this is how you do it, pretty easy. So those were numbers six and seven. Number eight, it's just how to reset stuff. So everything's gonna be a bit different when you're dealing with third party stuff, but in FL Studio, there's actually two quick ways to do it. One is the way I would recommend it. Say you've accidentally moved something, you can simply middle mouse click and it resets it. So that's how you do it, middle mouse click, super easy, super fast. The other way that's moderately quick is if you move something, you can actually right click on it and go to reset. And reset is underlined, the R is. So if you just hit R, it'll automatically you know, fix it for you. So if you move it, right click, hit R. I recommend using the middle mouse button. There's no menu, it's just faster. But that's how you reset stuff. Super, super handy. Again, it's gonna vary with third party stuff, but if it's made by image line, that's how you're gonna do it. Number nine is soloing a bus while keeping all the bus channels with that solo. So normally if you solo something, and you can do that by simply right clicking on it, it's going to solo that channel. And if you're soloing like, you know, a kick, that's fine. And it's gonna solo everything upstream from it. So stuff that it's going to got soloed, but the stuff that's going to it didn't get soloed. So if I'm soloing this kick bus and here are all my kicks, you know, none of them got included. And what I did for ages was I just clicked to include them in my, my solo group. And this is, uh, it also includes the side chain input. So you may have to mute those. But a lot of the times, right, that's gonna be annoying and you might not get them all. And so the workaround of this, or the way I recommend doing things is if you add Alt while you right click. So I'm gonna hold down Alt and then right click. Boom, it adds those channels in for me automatically. We can we can lose the side chain and away we go. Now you may be curious, cause I, I've, I've looked this up already. Is it possible to solo something without the side chain groups getting activated? At the current time, I was unable to find a solution. There were some interesting discussions on the forums and it may one day it may it one day, it may one day be implemented, but currently you'll have to turn off the side chain channels yourself. Unfortunately, if there is improvement on this, uh, let me know down in the comments. I'd be very interested to know. And finally, number 10, one of the ones I use all the time, super, super handy thing. So let's say that I add on a new thing. Whoops, let's go over here and grab a harmer and load this up. So, you know, you're gonna configure this, you're gonna have presets. And by the way, uh, if you name your preset with a certain color, and name, it'll actually like recolor it for you like automatically. So when you save your presets, pay attention to how you save them. Uh, but what we're gonna do here is let's just say we name this something like cool. And I simply shift clicked on it in order to rename quickly. I'm gonna change the color to something. And what you could do is you can actually hit control L and it will send it to an open mixer channel. It will color it and name it for you. So this is a very, very handy one. Most people do know this one like right off the bat because it's so useful. But yeah, control L, instead of coming over here and putting it on a channel and then you have to rename the channel and you have to color the channel, it's just, it's, you know, it's just a disaster. Instead, you can just have it automatically be all done for you. And this allows you to do things like if you color a group of channels with a gradient, it'll take that entire gradient and move it over to your mixer for you as well, which is, you know, super handy. Good luck doing that by hand. So those are my top 10 FO Studio shortcuts. If I missed one that you just can't live without, leave it down in the comments. I really tried to find ones that are less known but extremely useful, like moving groups of channels around or that menu I showed at the very beginning that allows you to get to all these buttons like automatically. Those things changed my workflow. So if you've got one like that, drop it down there. I skipped stuff like, you know, control C, control V, uh, scroll, it's hold control and scroll to zoom in and out. But if you'd like some more workflow based videos, maybe ones where I go into more, just a lot more shortcuts, I could happily do those. Just leave a comment down below. And I'm curious to see if you have any jewels that I possibly have missed. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.